Hey, what's up guys? This is John from the Reaper blog. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a template for working with video projects in Reaper. As you can see, Reaper looks a little bit different today. That's because I'm using a beta of the upcoming version five. If you go onto the forum, sign up, you can get uh, all the information for downloading and testing Reaper five on your own system. So the first thing to set up your template is to go into the preferences and set up some of the options for working with video. So I'm going to come down to the media and video section. On a Mac, I recommend you use this AV Foundation uh, decoder. Uh, currently, the way we choose a priority of which decoder will be used for the video files that you import, kind of set up manually, you have to enter the order that you want. Um, I choose AV Foundation because it seems to work really well with the files that my camera shoots and that um, ScreenFlow, my screen recording software, records. So I use the AV Foundation, which is Mac OS only. Uh, there's also the FFMPEG decoder, QuickTime, and VLC. If you're on PC, you'll probably want to use the VLC decoder as the first priority. Uh, you can enter a delay. If you know that there's a delay going to an external monitor or something like that, then you may want to. And the video window follows the edits. Yes, you do want that. Moving an audio item, you seek the video frame to the snap offset rather than the start of the item. You know, a small difference, but uh, if you're aligning things using snap offsets, then that's where you want it to be. Auto rotate, yeah, that all makes sense. When you're working with video, you may not want to import that file automatically. And this is what we're looking for. Copy imported media to project directory. You may or may not want to do this because, as you know, video files are very large. Uh, you may want to not do that and keep them in one folder and all of their projects just reference that. But you do usually want to do that for audio files, especially if you're working with a lot of separate samples and stuff like that. So it's up to you. It's something to be aware of. It's up to you how you want to organize your media. OK, now let's look at the project settings. So file and project settings. When you're working with video, it's always going to be 48 kilohertz sample rate. OK, in the media tab, you choose where you want things to be saved. Because it's a video project, you may want to rename this media files rather than audio files. Wave 24 bit, that's all good. And in the video tab, you choose your frame rate. The camera that I shoot with uses 29.97 non-drop. So uh, depending on the cameras that you use and the settings, that's what you would want to choose. It's best to use the frame rate that matches the footage you're using. Preferred video size, most of my videos are uh, 1920 by uh, 1080 if I'm using footage from my camera. But if I'm using ScreenFlow, then it's, uh, it's 2560 by 1440, the resolution of my iMac. So uh, this video will be edited at that resolution. For the media that I'm bringing in today, I'm going to set this back to 1080p. This setting determines which video items will be visible based on their tracks. So video items on track one will cover video items on track two, or you can set this to video items on track two will cover video items on track one. Uh, it makes more sense to me to have the lower numbered tracks, the ones at the top, be over top of the video items in layers. Uh, you can leave this on auto, let Reaper choose for you, and then um, you can check these or not. I usually have all of those checked. All right, so we've covered the encoder settings, the project settings. Now let's look at setting up our views and our grid. So when we're working with video files, we don't want to be working in a bars and beats grid or a minutes and seconds grid. We need to snap to frames. Let's look at the grid settings. Right click there, and then we're going to choose the top option, which is frames. That's all we need to do for that. When you're working on video, you need to snap all edits to the frames. Okay, remember that. 
Now in our ruler, I'm going to right click and set this to hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Now we're actually seeing frames. And then in our transport bar here, uh, we're going to make sure that this is set to ruler time unit. Okay. If I make a selection here, I'm seeing one bottom corner here, it's saying one frame. If I make a selection here to here, it's showing one second. All right, so get used to working like that. A frame is usually a small enough division that you can even edit audio to frames without any issues. You always snap items to frames and make all your video cuts on the frame. So a video project usually has three video tracks to start with and then three audio tracks to start with. And let's put uh, one track in there as a divider between those two so we can easily see what's going on. I'm going to set this custom track color and I'll do black. Just so we can um, more easily see what type of media is on the track. And let's do orange for the video and let's do green for the audio tracks. So you open up the video window with the option V or go to the view menu and choose video. And you probably want to dock this. Let's put that in the dock. And let's put the dock position up at the top of the window. Let's go to view and open up the effects browser. Let's position this on the left like that. All right, and I'm going to close toolbar eight. Don't need that. And I'm going to open the Media Explorer. And I'm also going to position this in that left toolbar. So I've got tabs here to go between uh, my effects browser and I can just drag and drop onto tracks or items and um, the Media Explorer for importing media, of course. And one of the reasons we need the effects browser always visible to us is because there's a new video processor right up at the top of the list. When you click on all plugins, there's video processor. And I add that to this track. And, you know, it, it really doesn't look like anything yet. It's basically like a JS plugin with title overlay. You can enter in your text with this uh, track opacity, zoom and pan. You can move videos around, zoom in, change the opacity so you can let uh, lower level videos through it. There's a bunch of other options, you know, uh, just it's a JS script in here. And it's, you know, it's a little bit weird right now, but uh, it does work pretty well. All right, so once you have your layout set up, you will want to save this as a layout for your video workflow. I'm not gonna save it because I have a slightly tweaked one. So this is the layout that I use. I've used Reaper for editing the last few tutorials, maybe the last six or so, and it's worked great for me. It's not perfect. There's a lot of things you still can't do in it. Transparent images on top of videos. So there's a few limitations for like labeling things. Can't do color correction. There's a lot of little things that are not ideal, but I've been pretty much able to work around anything. And I love that I can edit video just like audio. So I can um, use the same keyboard shortcuts and edit video. And you can do a lot more than you might expect. All right, so let's grab a video and preview it in Media Explorer. Select it, press play, and we can see it in the video window. We can also make a selection. So click and drag to make a selection. And we can drag this, just this section to our uh, timeline. Now, as you can see, there's audio and video in this clip. And if you don't want any audio, there's a great option in the source properties and simply ignore audio. This source properties window also shows you which decoder is being used. It shows you some properties about the original video and click OK. The audio disappears from there. Okay, so with ignore audio off, here's another way of basically removing the audio. If you mute this, 
the video goes dark, right? You can't do that. So uh, two options. You can option click your I.O. button, and then the audio won't be heard. You'll still see it in the meters, though. Or you can turn the item volume way, way down. And you won't see it on the meters. But you know what? I think this uh, source properties ignore audio option is really the best option. All right, so the last thing I need to show you before we close this video out is the render options here. So you want to do master mix, entire project, or time selection, whatever you need. Choose a directory. I'm going to do it in the video production folder. Give it a name. Make sure it's 48 kilohertz, full speed offline. And the output format is what you need to change. So you can use the FMPEG encoder. You can use the AV Foundation encoder. You can use a GIF. Uh, I recommend using this one, MPEG4 slash MOV. You can choose a streaming optimized version, non-streaming optimized version, QuickTime, even ProRes option, or audio only if you need to encode an AIC. So like this video that you're watching was probably encoded with this format, MPEG-4 video. If you click this button here, you can get the frame rate from the current video item, like just like that. You'll probably want to increase the bit rate to something like 12,000. For smoother motion, this is the amount of compression applied to that lossy format. And in this, you'll probably want 320. And again, no option there. This is a good format for uploading to YouTube. You can also do QuickTime and H.264 and the same thing, but it'll be a MOV container. And as always, when you export a video, make sure you test it, make sure that it's accurate in sync and um, there's no glitches and stuff like that. Because, you know, all these programs run into issues with stuff like that once in a while. All right, guys, I know this was a long video. Thanks for sticking through. Like the video if you did. Try out Reaper for video sometime. I think you guys will like it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty powerful, and it'll just keep getting better and better. So uh, stick with it. Subscribe to the channel. Check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time.